other parts of the van, boom, 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 you know, it's, it's over for us. <laughs> She's very, very like almost the polar opposite to Pip, which I feel like Holly Jackson had to do. 2 a.m. section. <laughs> So, if you've been here a while, you will know that Holly Jackson is one of my favourite authors. The Good Girls Guide to Murder series is one of my favourite series of all time. I love her. <laughs> Holly Jackson is incredible. And she recently came out with a new release, her first release outside of this series. It is called Five to Five, and I am incredibly nervous. <laughs> I'm scared. Are you scared? Yeah, I You should be. This is more of a thriller. So the synopsis that I know of this is that we have got a group of friends on an RV and there is a sniper somewhere in the area looking at them, threatening to <laughs> them. And it's like this tense situation where they're trying to live and not get killed by the sniper essentially. So it's not a mystery, which is what I'm used to from her. It's not mixed media. And I'm just so nervous <laughs> for her first book outside of that series. So I've decided to do something crazy. Wow, crazy. You're crazy girl. I'm generally like at this moment, like it's not too late to just not do this. <laughs> do I just give up? If you look on the front, you will see it is set over eight hours. It is set from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. You will see there's little chapter breaks with the times. I am gonna read this book from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. <laughs> it is currently 9.52. It's 9.52, so we're about to begin. And I just, I don't know why I'm doing this. If you don't know me, you will not know. I'm a grandma. I'm in bed by 10, asleep by 11 every night. I struggle for like a week afterwards if I go to bed at like one o'clock for some reason. How am I going to deal going to bed at six? I actually don't know how I'm going to do this. And also I tried to sleep beforehand. I was hoping to get like four hours of sleep so that we'd be ready to go. I got like an hour and a half. So... I'm out of here. Get that fire exit door. I'm off. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be reading Five Survive in the eight hours that it's set in real time. I'm going to try and read each section in the hour that it happens. So I'm going to, I'm not going to like read it as quickly as I can. I'm going to read the stuff that is set between 10 and 11, between 10 and 11 and so on. So I'm going to go get ready and read the first section. The first section is pretty short. We're probably going to stay up here for the first couple hours and then I will go downstairs for the morning so that I don't wake my family up. When I do go downstairs, I'm gonna try and take lots of things to do with me <laughs> outside of just reading to keep me awake. I genuinely am so, I'm so nervous. But I know if I stay in my bedroom, I'll just go to sleep. So anyway, let's go get set up and get ready to start reading at 10 o'clock on the dot. Okay, it is about to 10, 10 o'clock, any moment. Oh my God, this is so terrifying. Come on. There we go, 10 o'clock. Okay, let's start reading. Okay, so I just got to the end of the first section, the 10 p.m. section. It is like half past, oh, it's like 40 past now. Before we chat about what I think of the book so far, I do wanna take a moment to thank my sponsor for today's video, which is Serious Readers, because I was just using my light to read. So I've spoken a lot about my Serious Light to you guys, but I am obsessed. I'm obsessed is the only way to talk about it. I have been using this every night, pretty much, since I've got it to read. So if you 
you don't know, this is a reading light. Something that is so special about Sirius lights is they have this technology called daylight wavelength technology, which replicates the daylight spectrum as closely as possible. Before I used this, I don't think I realized how much I've been straining my eyes when reading at night. And the way that I describe this now is that it feels like a breath of fresh air when reading at night for my eyes. Like my eyes feel awake. They don't feel like they're, I feel like there was, I was straining them without realizing it. And now they just feel easy breezy, beautiful cover girl. <laughs> I love it so much. I think it is so incredible. I have the high definition light. My one has a dimmer, which I do find useful because I tend to have it on the kind of lower light setting. So it has helped with eye strain. I've been finding I'm reading a lot more when using it. I just love it. I love it so much. So it is an investment, but I think it's a worthwhile investment because it has leveled up my reading significantly, I would say, since I got it. I've been enjoying books a lot more and reading a lot more books, I feel like, since I got it. I don't know if that's causation or correlation, but I choose to believe it is partly causation. So I have a great code you can use. You can use my code MEG23, and with any purchase in the Sirius Lights range, you will get a free compact light valued at 150 pounds. A free light worth 150 pounds. It also gives you free international shipping. So some of you have said to me before, I would love this, but it's you know, a UK company, all the lights are made in the UK. My code gives you free international shipping, and they can also make any kind of plug that you need. So any kind of international plug that you need. They make all their lights so they can do that. So really recommend go checking them out down below. I am going to be using this <laughs> in the next sprint, I guess, as well in the next hour to read before I head downstairs because it just helps me keep alert and awake when reading and I love it so much. So yeah. Okay, let's chat about Five Survive. I just moved the camera a bit so we <laughs> we're changing up the vibes. I feel like we're gonna have a lot of the same shots tonight because I feel like, am I gonna have the energy to... <laughs> think about cameras, camera shots and like changing up the settings when it's like 3 a.m. and I'm just ready for bed. I don't know if I am. We have met our cast of characters. We have got six characters in this RV. It's late at night. They are driving, trying to find the campsite that they're gonna rest at the evening. The cast of characters that we've got, we've got Red, we've got her best friend Maddie, we've got Maddie's brother Oliver, we've got Oliver's girlfriend, is it Raina? Simon? And we've got Arthur. And Simon and Arthur, I feel like, are kind of just friends with the with the general friend group. Oliver already is a <laughs> Don't like Oliver. Bad vibes from Oliver. He's vile. Vile. I wouldn't wipe my ass with him if I had diarrhea. <laughs> Red, our main character, is a very anxious person already. She's kind of, like, losing her train of thought a lot, worrying about a lot. Girl, it's setting me off a little bit on my, like, anxiety and, like... <laughs> She's a very interesting character. It's already come out that her mum died a few years ago and I think she's really caring for her dad and like looking after her dad and so it's been difficult for her to come away. She's very poor and she's the reason that they're in the RV and didn't fly because she couldn't afford to fly. So she's already got this very interesting character. She's very, very like almost the polar opposite to Pip, which I feel like Holly Jackson had to do. Pip was such a strong character, like such like a... I don't know, just this strong archetypal character with these strong characteristics. A new character, after you've, all we've known from her is Pip, I feel like her new main character had to be really different. So I'm enjoying that. It's taken me a moment to get into the style of writing. The first chapter I was like, oh girl, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I was a little bit nervous, but I feel like I'm getting into it now. And at the end of the section, they've just punctured a tire. They went down all these roads, like these dirt roads, they got lost and they've punctured a tire, basically. Now, at one point in the RV, Oliver was telling them about him and Maddie's mother is like, is it, I don't know, American words, district attorney. I'm not used to this from Holly Jackson. Usually she's my brick gal. She's like a very high profile lawyer and she's doing a case at the moment with like the Philadelphia mafia or something. I don't know. And my first thought, cause we know there's a sniper coming. He's gonna try and my first thought was like, is it someone from the Mafia? But the way that the setting has happened, it's so circumstantial that they've ended up there. I think they like missed a turning and got a bit lost that I I can't believe that it's like something against one of them. But then why is there a sniper like trying to kill them? Like, is it that deep? Like, did you just not want anyone to drive on this road? Like what is happening here? It's getting weird. The title is Five Survive and there's six of them. So one of them is gonna die and I'm already like, who am I okay with dying? <laughs> who can we spare? 
Hey, yeah, no, I'm intrigued. I, I gotta admit, I think I watched, I uh, did, I went to the event that Holly Jackson did with Waterstones for this, and I think she spoke about how a lot of her books, like, are now gonna be set in America, like, the next few books, because it is rife for, like, true crime. Like, you know, we don't have as much <laughs> true crime stuff over here in the UK, but, like, it kind of makes me sad, because I loved that The Good Girl's Guide to Murder series was British. And like, I don't know, I feel like you don't read a lot of modern murder mysteries set in Britain. I don't know, but even when you do like Ruth Ware, like the It Girl, like it's still, even though that's set Oxford, like it wasn't like, it didn't have that like British flavor that I don't know how to describe this. And I feel like that series had, at least when it was written in the UK, when it's published in the US, they changed it to US, which is just freaking stupid. But anyways, so yeah, that does kind of make me a little bit sad. I don't know, I have not decided my thoughts on this yet, but yeah, we've got now 10 minutes till I'll start reading again. Yeah, oh my god. We're reading Five Survive. Right, section two, read. It is 11.53. I wouldn't say I started reading until like 11.25 or something, because I took the thumbnail for this. I knew I had to get that in early doors tonight, <laughs> otherwise. So I am reading the sections in like 20 to 30 minute chunks, but I think our next section will be a bit bigger, so. How exciting. I might tell you the plot up to vaguely, a little bit vaguely of the next section, but after that I won't be telling you any plot. But in basically this section, they, because I feel like the first third of a book or 100 pages-ish of a book, like, isn't spoilers really, it's setting up the plot. So anyways, in this section, they... <laughs> it's already beginning. <laughs> Getting tired now, though. Um, in the section, they really okay. We realised we're in we're in trouble here. There's a sniper, right? Their tires got boom, 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 boom. Other parts of the van, boom, 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 boom. You know, it's it's over for us. <laughs> I don't know how much I'm in loving it so far. It's fine, but I don't feel like the writing is the writing I loved in the other series so far. Now I'm only just getting into it, but that's kind of my overwhelming feeling at the moment. I like Red as a character. I'm not sure if our other characters are like fleshed out enough, but I mean, these are the only six characters we're gonna have for the whole book. So I feel like by the end of the book, they will be. It's still the beginning. I still don't need to expect much. You know when you usually, you read a book by an author you love and the writing feels familiar? This doesn't feel like reading someone familiar, you know? When I read a Taylor Jenkins read or an Erin Morganston or a Courtney Summers, like the writing is always so quintessentially them that it feels like coming home. This doesn't feel like that for me right now. I'm also starting to get tired. We're gonna go downstairs now. I was in bed. That was starting to become a mistake. <laughs> so we're gonna go downstairs for the next, well, the rest of it really. I gotta remind myself, I've already done a quarter. I've already done two out of the eight hours. So like, that's pretty good. We can keep doing this. I'm starting to get that thing. Like when I talk, my ears feel funny. I get that when I'm tired. I don't know if anyone else gets that. Anyways, let's go downstairs, hunker down and read the next section. Okay, so we are downstairs. Our uh, first stay awake objective is I'm keeping it lighter <laughs> than I would usually. Usually I would just have these lamps on, but we're keeping one of the big lights on today, even though I object to it morally. <laughs> the big light. We're keeping one on tonight so that hopefully I stay awake. So this is where <laughs> we are probably going to be spending most of tonight. <laughs> it's not going to take me the whole hour to read each section and I want to be intentional with what I'm doing with that time rather than just scrolling through like Twitter or Instagram which I think will make me more tired. I might play some Sims, I might watch some Royal Housewives, I might play on my Switch. So still like mindless stuff but you know, stuff that keeps me a bit more awake. And I'm gonna go get some more teasers to eat. So it's like 10 past midnight. Let's read the next section. Ooh, 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 you're falling. <sighs> like me falling asleep. <laughs> okay, so I just got to the end of the midnight section, which I'm not gonna lie, I was cutting a bit fine. It's three minutes to 1 a.m. Two minutes. <laughs> okay, so I told you I was gonna tell you a little bit about the plot in this one, but it would be the last, I'm just, I, I, I just try and speak quietly. My family are asleep. <laughs> I told you I was gonna talk a little bit about the <laughs> plot. Oh my God, we've got like five hours more to get through. 
I told you I was going to tell you a little bit about the plot in this one. And what I'm going to tell you is that they've made some kind of contact with a sniper. And he said, one of you knows a secret. And I need you to figure out who it is and tell me the secret. Too much drama for me. And that's it, okay? That's all I'm going to tell you. So we know throughout the rest of the book, secrets are going to be being dredged up. They probably all have secrets. Which one of them is the one he wants to know? I don't know. <laughs> They're probably all going to have secrets dredged up and like be fighting. The girlies are going to be fighting. Still not in love with the writing. Number one, I'm starting to look tired. <laughs> Still hate Oliver. Oliver can, for all I care, he can be the one for all I care. I feel like it's not going to be him. Also, something that I am enjoying, though, is Red... Okay, so Red <laughs> keeps getting distracted quite easily. Like, she struggles to keep a train of thought. And she's getting distracted by things like the curtains, like a pattern on the curtains and other stuff like that. And I feel like that's all going to end up coming into play. Like, she's going to have a realisation based on some of the stuff she keeps getting distracted by, which is kind of fun. Um... 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 I don't think I'm going to be very good at being tactful. <laughs> I want to say something but I don't want to say it in the politest way um because <laughs> I'm tired already this vlog is about to be a mess I am so sorry I feel like when some people do these vlogs they're like super like fun and whatever I am a grandma I should have been asleep hours ago this is not my life <laughs> The way I'm feeling at the moment is I swear when I was watching that live show that Holly Jackson did, she said that she wrote this, I can't, I'm going to butcher the time period, but I remember thinking, that's very quick to write a book, like a month or something ridiculous. Like, I can't remember. It was like, or like six weeks. I feel like it was something around that kind of length of time that she said she wrote this in. And I'm just feeling like, I don't know. I'm just not in love with it immediately. There's just something about it that I'm like, I feel like we could have tightened this up. I feel like it could actually be even faster paced. I don't know. It just feels a little bit like, let's speed things up a little bit. <laughs> I'm not making sense. I love you, Holly Jackson. Don't ever watch this video. <laughs> video, no, Cleo. <laughs> Anyways, it is now one minute past one. So let's read the next section. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Let me hear you say it. We're like halfway through. Hell yeah. So I have read the end of the 1am section. So we're like halfway through now. We've already got to do what we've already done again. I'm not gonna lie. My reading speed has not been fast. I'm... It's... <laughs> <laughs> so, like... I have a few things to say. Firstly, no secrets have been revealed. I was waiting for some juicy, juicy secrets. Some juicy, juicy secrets and nothing. No secrets have been revealed. I feel like everyone has secrets that start spilling them. Ugh, they've just been doing stupid stuff with mirrors. Also, I want to say what I feel like is missing for me from this. I'm not like disliking it, I don't need to think that. What is missing for me from this galley. I took the dust jacket off. Look how cute she is. Is that... <laughs> oh my god. Why am I doing this video? <laughs> you know, what's so good about the Good Girls Guide to Murder series is like Holly Jackson kept like coming up with such fun things to incorporate in the mysteries that were like so unique. Like a Fitbit tracker being how you solve a mystery or like I'm tired so I can't think of anything, but there were loads of like Snapchat, like <laughs> geolocations, like, I don't know, incorporating loads of really fun stuff into it. And because in this, our characters like are in the middle of nowhere, no Wi-Fi, no cell phone connection, they're having to, they are like, that can't happen. You know, like her mixed media prowess literally cannot be used. It's like the antithesis, it's like the opposite. So. <laughs> but imagine how tired we are. 
Imagine how tired we are. They were doing some stuff with a mirror and I just, it was being described and I could not understand for life. Like I couldn't picture it. And like when I can't picture something, we start getting into like troubled territory. Cause that is number one, like important for me is I have to be able to picture what's going on. If I can't imagine it, what am I doing here? What's the point? <laughs> so they're kind of my issues at the moment. Like I'm feeling like I'm missing that extra something that Holly Jackson's books always had. I'm not getting any secrets. I'm not feeling particularly tense. I don't feel like invested. You know, I was hoping this would be similar to No Exit by Taylor Adams, where like from the get-go, you feel sick. It's high, it's high stakes. And this is very high stakes, you know, we've got a sniper. But like, it feels not high stakes. It feels quite slow paced. I feel like it's too long actually for what it is. For a book that's over eight hours, I think it could actually be shorter. I wonder if we almost have too many characters as well. I feel like we could have cut down to five. I just feel like it all could have been a bit tighter. The whole time I was reading that section, I was telling myself, oh my God, I am gonna make food. That's the motivation to get me through it. I was gonna make food. Um, I've got to that point of tiredness where like the idea of any kind of food makes me feel like, sick it's absolutely sickening that's sickening and that sucks because i was going to film that as b-roll to make this video more interesting for you um so there's that like you asked me to eat an egg right now i would literally rather stay up another 20 hours <laughs> um so i will say just read the 2 a m section <laughs> <laughs> it is 2.43. We're going strong, guys. I think it's almost 3 a.m. If we've made it to 3 a.m., we can make it to 6 a.m. Well, it's three hours between friends. Anyways. <laughs> we had the first moment in the section that actually made me gasp. Like, jaw drop made me gasp. But it didn't, like, hit as much as it could. Like, the initial moment was like... <gasps> But then I feel like we haven't taken full advantage of it. I'm just waiting. I feel like the secrets are about to start coming out. But I feel like I'm being teased. And I don't know in a good way. I feel like I'm being promised a lot and not being given it. <sighs> it was a pretty short section though. I read that pretty quickly. I think the next section is pretty short. And then four and five a.m. are the long ones which like holly uh, why are we doing that to me but yeah i just i'm still of the opinion that it could be shorter and quicker and faster paced and like higher stakes it's not giving me the high stakes it want i want it even though yes like at this point crazy stuff is happening excuse me i am asking for more and i do not I think that's irrational there was just a line that says uh, red checking her phone it says 3.13 a.m. Strange how she didn't feel tired at all. Well, it's currently 3.08 for me. I beg to differ, Red. I beg to differ. I beg to differ. Okay, hey, I decided to walk around <laughs> for a sec to try and wake up. I can't tell you much of what happened in that last section. I'm gonna be honest, I feel like not, I'm looking a little bit like, oh my God, someone's gonna, there's a killer in the house, the killer. The killer. Regular scarves have the ends where the killer right. can come and just finish you off. I don't want to play music in the shower because I want to hear if the killer is coming. I've been aware of the killer since birth. Yeah, I can't tell you much what happened in that section. I have no clue. No clue. No clue. I can safely say now that I am not loving this. <laughs> as much as I wanted to. I thought this was like a guaranteed five star. It is not gonna be a five star. I was thinking about it. I'm like, okay, right. The thrilleriness isn't working for me because it's not a fast enough pace. I'm not feeling stressed out. There's enough happening to make me stressed out. I'm just getting annoyed at some of the, ca oh, whoa. <laughs> just getting annoyed at some of the characters that are there and I'm like okay the thriller isn't working let's go back to a mystery Holly let's go back to I've been showing you oh my god not the family photo I skip over that I'm like 12 in that let's do a mystery right and here's the thing mixed media Holly Jackson can like kill it why don't we there's this secret we don't know what's going on there's a secret someone's got a secret i feel like they should all have more distinct secrets all the characters and throughout we get mixed media hinting at what each of their secrets could have been so we're getting information as the audience that we know that the characters in the book don't 
but we're getting little hints, little teases as to what could be happening. I think that would have made it much better, you know? So they're my current thoughts, you know? Imagine like an Instagram post or a police report or a this linking to what, not outright saying what their secrets are, but hinting, we're slowly building the picture of what all their different secrets are and which is the ultimate secret that the person wants to know them about. Anyways, I'm gonna go read the next section. <laughs> I am so tired. Oh, a cat is scratching to come in. Who is it? Come on in. You wanna come say hello? <laughs> Can you see them? Oh, so tired. I know the feeling, Rora. Right, you coming in? Yes. Come on in. Um, I thought we'd hang out with the gnomes, by the way. <laughs> That's just like a running joke. My people get my dad gnomes for Christmas. You can't be my friend. Just please don't be my enemy. Because my life is tough enough as it is. Okay, the book. It's just getting more and more ridiculous at this point. Like it's ridiculous. Like <laughs> I'm really sorry. I'm not loving it like I wanted to. Holly. <laughs> the thing is, I would much rather be asleep than reading this. Lux. <laughs> Stop it. We're coming in, okay. <laughs> the stuff that's happening does not need to happen. It can be like, certain decisions are being made that can be so easily fixed. <laughs> like, it, like, it does not need to happen. Decisions are being made that make no logical sense. Like, for example, we may be just eliminated one possibility by doing X. Then another possibility comes up and we can eliminate it by doing X again, but we just choose not to and choose to put ourselves in mortal danger, don't we? Do you want to cuddle? We had great cuddles earlier. Hi. I love you. Do you know that? Yeah. Whoa. We're so tired, huh? So tired. <laughs> yeah. And here's the thing. There's going to be people that say, Oh, she ruined reading it by staying up late. What a stupid video. She was never going to like it. Well, those are the same people <laughs> that would be saying, if I cut this short one, just like, you know, dipped and we're like, I'm going to bed, be like, oh, she sets these reading challenges and then doesn't go through with them. Why would you even watch? And then the same people be like, oh, you shouldn't even do the video in the first place, but then you wouldn't be watching it if you didn't have a bit of pizzazz to it. I like a bit of pizzazz, okay? So like, <laughs> I think just how ridiculous elements are being and how easily fixed they all are, um, just aren't interesting me. I just not, Holly, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's probably like a three. Lux, I swear to God, if you throw up, no, we're good. Um, <laughs> maybe even worse. Rora, you guys are testing me. Come on in. You coming in, or are you just lying there? You want to fight. Coming in? Coming in? They can just see your fat ass, Rora. <laughs> is it actually going to be worse than a three? Maybe. Maybe it's giving 2.5, Rora. She's just lying there with her belly out. Like. <laughs> Anyways, let's go read the last section. There is a 6 a.m. that has like five pages, but I'm just gonna go ahead and read that in the same chunk as the 5 a.m. So, I just finished the book and I was gonna move somewhere to tell you, but I have two cats on me now. Hey guys, how you doing? Are you gonna let me go to bed in a sec? Where do we begin? Do we really want to end this vlog here? Do we want to pretend this vlog never happened? These are these are options. I finished Five Survive. And I'm going to give it 2.5 stars. Actually, don't even talk to me. I don't even want to talk about it. I am so, I am so sad. <laughs> I might exit this yeah. conversation Why? now. No, I want to have it. Yeah. yeah, I'll see y'all later. Oh, Rora's gone. That means Lux is gonna go. Oh, she's gonna go for the chocolate wrappers. She is obsessed with that. Yes, Maltesers. She's obsessed with Maltesers. 
If she sees more teasers, she wants to lick the chocolate off of them. No, she's picking up the packet in her mouth. All right. No. Stop it. I don't even. I don't even know what to say to you. I am so beyond devastated. It just didn't give me what I wanted. I think because I didn't feel I feel like these characters for the be, for them being the only six characters you spend time with the whole book. I didn't care about a single one of them. I didn't care about a single one of them, which like I have to if I'm going to feel tense or dread. Oliver in particular, I think just like how awful a character <laughs> there is meant that I could not get invested at all. I was like someone just shut him up. This <laughs> guy it's 6 a.m. <laughs> it is 6.02 a.m. It doesn't want to focus. Yeah, Oliver is like an awful character. A, he's a douchebag, but also I just feel like he's a bit like, not much, there's so much depth, there's so much layers to him. This is, I am so disappointed. This is not what I expect from Holly Jackson. Like, this feels like a book that's been rushed out to me. I'm not happy. <laughs> I just feel like everything that I know from Holly Jackson in terms of the twists, the depth of characters, the great writing, like none of them were there for me. I feel like I've ended an alternate reality. I don't know what's happening. And when I tell you it felt like there were no twists, I felt like there were no twists. Like the resolution is so simple. It's so simple. Like if you're going to give me a thriller like this, give me twists, give me shocks, give me... <gasps> It just felt so, like, obvious the entire time. Like, not necessarily to get from point A to point, let's say the end is point D, right? But once you get point B, you know what point C is going to be. And once you get point C, you know what point D is going to be. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, it's never shocking you in that, you know? <laughs> Once you learn a piece of information, you know what's coming next. You get me? I don't even want to talk about it. I can't believe I've stayed up till 6am reading this book. And I was like, this is going to be the best night of my life. It's going to be a five star. I'm going to be living my best life. Oh no. Oh no. Absolutely not. I'm just going to pretend this book doesn't exist. Okay? We're just going to pretend it's not part of the Holly Jackson discography. Anyways, that's the end of the vlog. <laughs> I am so sorry. I'm so tired. I can't tell what this is going to be like as a video. I don't know if it's going to be boring, if it's going to be chaotic, it's going to be both of those, like, I, um, <laughs> so I don't know what, to, I don't know what I'm apologising for, but I'm apologising, <laughs> um, so, yeah, <laughs> So, yeah, that's it. That's Do I want to end the vlog here? I suppose I do. That's the end of Five Survive. Reading it overnight from 10pm to 6am. I'm going to go sleep for at least like six hours now. When everyone else is waking up. I feel like I just, I'm done. I'm done. I don't want to talk anymore about this book because I am beyond disappointed. I didn't know it was possible to be this disappointed. Well, I'm glad this wasn't my first book of the year because it could have been. Anyways, I love you. Thank you for watching this video. Who knows how long it is? Who knows what the quality is? Who knows if it was entertaining or if it wasn't? I'm still talking. It's time for me to go to sleep. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you soon in another video. Bye. <laughs>